So I've just come back from a beachside holiday and I wanted to talk about how my watch has actually performed in use by the sea. So for the first time ever, my Aquaterra, my Seamaster Aquaterra actually met the sea. Now, before I jump fully into the video, I have to ask you, if you take just a moment to subscribe, it would make a massive difference because I'm super close to a thousand subscribers and I'd really appreciate your subscription. Now let's go into my wristwatch check and my drinks check. Start off with a drinks check, shall we? I'm drinking some Southern Comfort with ice. Well, there was ice, but it's so hot in the UK right now that it seems to have melted. So never had Southern Comfort before, really. So uh, let's take a sip, shall we? Ooh, that's very different. Very sort of spiced sort of flavors coming through, like, um. What is that? There's definitely a note on, and a smell to that. It's like, almost like marzipan -y. It's alright. It's definitely different. I'll give it that. I'm not sure how it would pair with Coca-Cola or something like that. But it's quite nice. It's quite pleasant. Very sort of palatable. Yeah, not, not too bad really. And for my uh, wristwatch check, I'm wearing a bit of a vintage shirt today, so I decided to pair it with a vintage style watch, which is my Saint Martin. I actually think this looks really good on this sort of quite cheap brown leather, and uh, yeah, I think it goes quite well with the shirt. It's sort of a vintage sort of look I'm going for today, and it's just very sort of loose and airy because it is really hot here in the UK, so wearing some looser clothing is definitely aiding in my cooling. Now let's get into the video. So as a lot of you know, I took a few watches with me on holiday. Now if you haven't seen the video where I break down what I took with me in my watch roll, well here's a quick summary. I had my Buford Cavalli, I had my Amiga Aquaterra, I also had my Kronos, as well as my G-Shock. Now the, some of these watches actually had quite a reasonable amount of wrist time, others had absolutely no wrist time during the six days that I was away. So let's start off with what got worn the least. Surprisingly enough, it was actually my Kronos. I didn't wear it once. But that's not to say I didn't get some Kronos photos, and if you're wondering how that was possible, because my friend that I was with has also got a Kronos, but he's got the black Kronos date. So um, yeah, I've actually really enjoyed taking photos of his watch in action, and he really wore that watch. I'll get, late, I'll get back onto that a little bit later, because that, there's some interesting stories around that watch. But the next up, what I also didn't really wear much at all, was my Buford Cavalli. I thought it looked fantastic when I did wear it. I wore it for one day, took it around town, took it to the harbour that I was staying near, and um, I had some beautiful, really fresh seafood. I had some really nice seafood, and um, I really enjoyed just wearing it about, and it looked fantastic on wrist. I also got a, a cheeky photo, and that was it really, just the one. I didn't really get any other photos of it. So yeah, I didn't really receive a lot of wrist time, but that's not its own fault. It's because I wanted to go in the sea a lot when I was away, and it just was not sea capable with that quite uh, sensitive leather strap it has on it, which is a Stingray leather. Now up next though, I have to talk about it, the G-Shock. It did get a lot of use. It got a lot of use. So I took the G-Shock right into the sea straight away. That was my beta watch on the holiday. I took it into the sea. I wore it when I went out, and I just really enjoyed wearing it, I have to say. It slipped over the wetsuit really nicely and I wore it while surfing, while I was using it a kayak as well. And just, just around town really, it was really nice to have. And the thing I wore the most was my Aquaterra, my most expensive watch on the holiday. I wore the most by far because I just really loved the feel of it. I don't know why I wasn't so worried about it, I just didn't really get worried when taking it out at all, which is not really like me. I'm normally quite a bit more conscious when I'm taking a valuable watch out anywhere, but I was able to relax, enjoy the Aquaterra, and just wear it about, take it, you know, to some restaurants, you know, walk around town with it, cook dinner with it, you know, I was just enjoying it. Now, the only thing I didn't really get to do a lot of with it was take it into the sea, because I wanted to wear it over my top of my wetsuit, but the straps I had were not able to do that, because the really nice Artem strap is very, very tough to adjust, and I just didn't want to bother with that, and the leather strap would obviously perish quite quickly if I took it into salt water. So I didn't really get to wear that, but that allowed the G-Shock to get some more wrist time. 
but I did really enjoy just wearing the Aquaterra around town and I think it was my favourite watch by far really of the holiday. I really did enjoy it and I posted so many photos of that. So if you haven't seen my Instagram, go and have a look because of some amazing photos on there of the Aquaterra and some of the other watches. Now as the Aquaterra is part of the Seamaster line, I felt it was only necessary to let it be sort of met with its other half, the sea itself. So I took it to the sea and I lowered it into a little tide pool and I tried to get it on camera, but it didn't turn out great at all. I'm so sorry, guys. I really wanted to get a good bit of footage. I set up the tripod. I had as much sort of confidence as I could with it. I looked through the viewfinder as best as I could, but I just couldn't see anything. It was, the sun was so reflective. And when I got to try to do the shot, yeah, you couldn't see me actually putting the watch in the water. But you could see it dripping afterwards. So, you know, I did it. But it's just annoying that I didn't get that moment on camera. It was just really hard for me to see the actual through the viewfinder and through onto the screen. I also had the camera in a plastic bag to not get any sand on it. So it was just really impossible for me to see properly. Anyway, I did try and do that and I got the Seamaster reunited with the other half at sea itself. And I really did enjoy that. It was a kind of special moment, to be honest. It sounds so stupid, doesn't it? I mean, it's just a watch at the end of the day, but it was a kind of cool moment, to be honest. I really did think that was a, a bit of a highlight of the trip. But let me go on to the other watches and how they were sort of really put through their paces and why for me, even though I really loved wearing the Aquaterra and it's my favourite watch on the holiday, I think the gold star really deserves to go to the Kronos because even though I didn't wear mine at all, wow did my friend's Kronos take a beating. So it's an automatic watch, so it's got mechanical movement, yet he wore it like it was a G-Shock. He put it through its paces like I've never seen any mechanical watch be put through its paces. So he first took it out to sea over the wetsuit, you know, swimming around with it, kayaking with it. Quite sort of standard, you know, quite quite respectable to endure that sort of thing. And then he took it surfing right next to a rocky beach. So he was coming off his board. You know, he fell off his board a lot. So did I. Don't want to get wrong. It's my first time ever surfing, so I came off a lot. But he wore that watch in. He smashed that watch about. It, I don't believe it got any scratches on it. It still works absolutely fine. And he was coming off the board basically every single wave. And the watch still ticks to this day. Now, when we got back to the place we were staying, he actually dropped the watch from full height. So six feet, he dropped the watch onto a hardwood floor. I thought that was it. The watch has somehow survived surfing. And yet it's just been dropped six feet. It's gone now. No mechanical watch would ever survive that. But somehow it did. It, it continues to keep very good time. The date function still works. It still winds. It still hacks. Every mechanical feature still works fine. I have no idea how. I would never, ever advise doing that with your mechanical watch. Just, It's just impressive as all hell. And I think that's why the Kronos deserves the gold star of this sort of video. Because it is just an incredible watch for the value for money. Now, I actually did really enjoy the holiday itself. I know you, don't, you guys come for the watches. But I just want to talk a little bit about the holiday because... I really enjoyed it. I loved the kayaking. I loved surfing. I've never done surfing before in my life, but I managed to get a little bit of footage with the GoPro. It wasn't very easy at all. I had no mounts whatsoever, so I was hand holding it, trying to get some footage of my friends surfing and so what I was on the board as well. So I was trying to get some footage and I think some of it came out quite all right. Let me know what you think down below of this video. I know it's kind of a weird one and it's probably a bit short. I can't really tell how short it's going to be because I've done so many takes just trying to get off the sweat off my head and whatnot so i have no idea how long this video is going to be but i really hope you've enjoyed it regardless i hope it's a bit of a different video and it sort of gets you in the summer mood with all the nice tropical shots of going underwater and all the watches in use thank you so much for watching i really hope to see you in the next video goodbye